Hi, in this section we are going to talk about game engines or game trees. So, let's get started. What is a game tree? Basically, it is a directed graph whose nodes are positions in the game. It is basically a tree-like structure where the edges are the moves and the nodes are basically the current states. The complete game tree include every possible outcome and usually, for example, chess, it would be impossible to build a whole game tree because it is impossible to build the tree-like structure in the memory because the tree can get very big with only a few moves. So for large games such as chess, computer programs are forced to estimate who is winning or losing by sampling just a small portion of the entire game tree. So we just construct the first few levels of the tree, plus we have a guess with the help of a heuristic function. Okay, so the game tree is quite important in artificial intelligence, so if we want to get the best move in a game, we have to search the game tree with Minimax algorithm, for example, which is basically a depth-first search. So it's very important to see that you may pose the question that, okay, why do we have to bother about graph-related algorithms? Because, for example, as far as game trees are concerned, these kinds of graphs and tree-like structures are becoming more and more important. So what's very important that for games with two players, for example, such as the Go, the Tic-Tac-Toe or the Chess, we have to construct a game tree. But usually, if we would like to construct a whole game tree, sometimes it is impossible because we are not able to allocate as much memory as possible. So we usually construct just a portion of that given game tree and we use some heuristic function in order to predict whether that given move is going to be good or bad for us. But this is why we are going to consider tic-tac-toe, because for tic-tac-toe we are able to consider the whole game tree, so if we use this game tree approach with the help of Minimax algorithm, then we are able to construct an algorithm that's impossible to beat. Okay, so for example, we have the initial state for tic-tac-toe. This is a 3x3 three three grid. We have two players denoted by X and zeros. And of course, at the beginning, the chessboard is empty. Then, we are going to construct this tree-like structure on a layer-by-layer -layer basis. So the first player is able to set the X nine different locations. Here, 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 and here. This is the so-called first level. Then we will have the second level, for example, for this state. Let's consider this state. If X is at this location, then the zero can be put in here, 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 or here. This is the so-called second level. So what's very, very important, as you can see, that this game tree can become enormous. And this is why, okay, for tic-tac-toe, we are able to construct the whole tree-like structure in the memory. But for chess, it would be impossible to do so. Okay, so most of the times we are not able to construct the whole game tree, because for tic-tac-toe, the game tree have 225,000 leaf nodes at the last level. It's a huge amount of leaf nodes, but okay, we are able to cope with it in the 21st century. But even in the 21st century, we are not able to handle chess. Because for the chess, the game tree would have millions and millions of leaf nodes at the last level. So that's all about the theoretical background for game trees. Thanks for watching.